Oh, man, I hate Mondays. Nah, man, it's Tuesday. Wait, 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 wait. What day is it? You know what day it is. Tuesday. Bruise Day Tuesday. Oh, oh, fuck yeah. Grab a cold one. It's Bruise Day Tuesday. Brought to you by the Cellar and Six Pack Store. Here is Huck and Big Nate. Aloha. Welcome into another edition of Bruise Day Tuesday brought to you by the Cellar Restaurant. And six pack and store. Six pack store. They have it all. Do you have a six pack? I don't have a six pack. Uh, I got a keg. <laughs> Beach body not happening this uh, year. I got the old, I got the what is it? The man bod. I got the man bod. I got the deluxe man the bod. The dad bod. Dad bod. Deluxe. Which is coveted, from mm. what I understand. So I hear. So we're gonna drink some of our bread and a butter. Bread and butter, which is hazy IPA. So uh, mine is a hazy IPA called Shake What Your Mama Gave You. So I'm shaking some uh, grilled cheese sandwich and some Spam. That's what she gave me. Um, this is Smutty Labs or Smut Labs. So this is apparently Smut Labs. Smut I don't Labs. think they make beer. No, this one does. Apparently, uh, Smutty Nose Brewery, which is actually an old school really good brewery in new hampshire or maine or somewhere up there north i've been to it and uh they were like the ones i've never seen they had a a horizontal fermentation tank i'm like well that's innovative they go no it's the only space we had was this basement thing that went back so we just laid one on the side and uh anyway they went under they opened a brand new giant fancy place Right at the, you know, man, there's a dip about five years ago in craft beer. And then we went under and the, they got bought out by a, like a, just an investment firm. And so apparently the investment firm is invested and now they have like smut labs. So they're making some innovative beers there. Here's, this is one of them. So uh, there's a lot for me to pick apart there. Um, All right. What I want to start with. So the fermenting tank. They had to adapt it to the space. Correct. And you said that's innovative. And they said, no, it's not. That's just all we have. But I'm going to be honest with you. It does sound like it was innovative. That's what I thought. Uh, I'm rarely wrong, so I would have to agree with you. Necessity is the mother of invention. Mother of invention, just like Frank Zappa's band. It's innovative. For those folks who don't know Frank Zappa, he's an old school guy. Secondly, do you know the story behind the smutty nose? Is there like a creek or Uh, No, I think it was a ship. Okay, I think it was a ship it had to do with Mariner thing. Might have been the, per- the girl on the front of the ship. I don't know. I can look it up. But as I recall, the smutty nose was like a ship. That sticks in my mind. And my mind is like a steel trap always shut. Well, not, I always think, I always think of, uh, you know, how they've got the, particularly you see it in pirate movies, the, the, the pretty mermaid on the front of the ship. I assume she's like doing like a cutesy, like playboy pose and, Everything's just kind of out there in the open. Yeah. Well, at least the we're, front part is. <laughs> we're going to have to find the Smutty Nose ship. We'll look it up. Next week, Huck and I are going scuba diving. Oh, Smutty Nose Island, one of the Isle of Shoals. And they're all unfiltered and known for their distinctive labels. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, you have a distinctive label. Well, thank you. I've always, <laughs> That's a I've always wanted to be known for that. I've always wanted to be known for that. Distinctive is, is one of those words that like just literally means it stands out there. So that could be an insult. Yeah. So I had a, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a connection, a shift here. I forget what you call it, where you go from one subject to the other. What do you call that? A shift, a turn, a segue. A segue. Okay. So here we are. You know, everybody's drinking these these Everybody likes these milkshake IPAs, right? They start in one place, went to another. So they're kind of getting recycled, right? So here's my story for the week. Last week, I received for my Jeep a thing that sticks into the receiver hitch on the back, and it's a big basket with sides. And I sat there in the front yard, and I cussed and hammered with a rubber mount, and I got that thing on. And in the end, I was cleaning up my mess, and there's a big box about the size of this thing, probably two by four. And I take the big box and I go out back and behind our apartment, there's four apartments. There's eight trash cans and four of them are blue, which means trash. And four of them are green, which means recycling. 
So I went to the nearest recycling one, opened up, and I shoved the box in it. Didn't think anything of it. Went cheap riding. Came back, I think the next day. And I come up to my door inside the foyer, and there's that box leaning against my door. Oh, no. And I'm like, what? Why is this here? So I said, well, that's stupid. So I pick it up and I carry it out, drop it right back in the recycling bin because I'm trying to do the right thing, right? So we go unload the Jeep stuff and we in there for a minute. I come back out to get something and there it is laying on my Jeep. So I was like half of a, half of a bad mood. So I said, well, let's burn it, son of a bitch. Because I can't say that. That's also a viable option. Yeah. Anyway, I lit it on fire. And then I heard a siren, so I freaked out and put it out in the water bottle. Anyway, I smashed it up, and I threw it behind a trash can. And I got to thinking, somebody's messing with me. So I'm like, you know, there's, other than my wife, the only thing I really care about in life is my Jeep. So I took my Jeep down to my new place and had her follow me and came back. Because, I mean, I'm like, I don't know, why is somebody messing it's with me? It's a weird, it, that's the uh, Jeep equivalent to a horse head in the bed? Yeah. Through cardboard box on my cardboard Jeep. on top. I was just freaked out, right? Yeah. So anyway, sitting there watching TV and about 10, 15, Liz gets a text from the landlady. And she goes, what? He says, the landlady just texted us and said to make sure that we put our trash in the correct numbered bin that someone complained. So I immediately pulled on my underpants and ran out there to see what number bin I had put that in. Because I've been there for nine or 10 years. And we, we just don't, the first thing that's empty, we put the stuff in, yeah. right? So it's number two, the new guy. And I'm like, uh-huh. So I'm like, that is so weird. How can somebody be that anal that they care? Now it's the punchline. He's a mailman. So if he puts something in the box with the wrong number, he gets a lot of crap. So I guess he's just like, oh my gosh. It's just this weird, obsessive, compulsive. I guess. It has to be in the right number box. The right box. numbered box. Otherwise, I can't sleep at night. So I did what I did is the rest of the week, this week, is I played garbage can Jenga. And I took all my garbage in one can. And it was probably two and a half, one and a half times as high to the can. But they picked it up today. So anyway, that's, a, <laughs> that's my story about recycling. You know what? So that, I don't do it anymore. That actually had a much happier ending than I expected, though. Because, like, I was expecting a really nosy neighbor, like some HOA garbage. Yeah, I but didn't know. It to be the mailman being that, you know what? Well, he's my neighbor. and the, He's not even my mailman. He's just a mailman. I, yeah, I, I he's applaud not even a his attention to he's, detail. He's like a part-time mailman. So probably he's overly sensitive. He probably did put some mail in the wrong <laughs> box. It keeps him up at night. <laughs> Every time it happens, I'm gonna go look. Oh in, God! Look in the window, and see if he's got a big pile of mail hanging around in there. You know, some of these guys do that. You know, I and mean, they don't want to deliver it, so you just take it home. There was a case recently where, uh, in it was over in England, the UK, and I don't know how their postal service system works exactly, but it's pretty close to here. And a mailman died recently, and they found 22 years worth of mail. People were getting birthday cards. And expired that's sad. gift cards. That, that's sad. And now well, they weren't going like, to use the gift cards anyway. People, they were going to put them on yeah. the wall until they were done. People, people are going after the uh, after Royal Mail, like looking for some sort of settlement. Oh. Well, similar story is there's some place, I think it was in England as well. There was a museum. And when they opened up, this guy came and he had a little chair and umbrella. And he sat at the gate and he collected the parking fee from everybody. And that's. After a year or so, there was a little hut there. And for 20 years, every day they were open, this guy's out there collecting parking fees. It was free parking. And one day, he wasn't there. And they're calling around, where's the parking guy? And they're like, we, we don't have, we don't a, have parking a parking guy. guy. <laughs> they estimate he made 1.5 million pounds, which is like $2.5 million. Yeah, so that's a lot of money. A lot of money. 20 years, he's retired. He's on the beach somewhere. It's all I respect the heck out of that guy innovation he had no he had work ethic he saw an opportunity <laughs> he and he took an it opportunity and he committed to it you so, know what i wonder like again I, i'm not familiar with the uk's tax system well i think it's pretty I onerous I, I want, onerous i wonder how much was reported to the government zero I mean, I don't think he was getting their equivalent of a w-2 <laughs> he, he or a 1099 receipts. i'm pretty sure <laughs> he, he wasn't was sending one in receipts. himself Come on. 
He's probably yeah. off his regular taxes. He's deducting that lawn chair and that umbrella. If he had any sense. Well, I mean, you have to. You have to. So anyway, let's I'm talk work, about I'm, recycling. I'm working now, in and out. Now we've breached recycling. It doesn't work, right? The only thing you can recycle are aluminum cans. There's like three things. Aluminum cans, precious metals. And by precious, even brass, copper. You know, hell, heck, they'll cut a... Uh, they'll take a 4,000 4, volt chance to get copper. They will take your catalytic converter and take the oh, platinum out too. Well, that's different, but yes, they will. And that's not really recycling, but it is. But yeah, they'll take it. And there's certain ones that are better than others. So you should look it up. And if you have one of those cars that is has the high value one, because not all of them have the platinum in them, then you should probably get a car alarm. Because I mean, it costs you like, what, $1,500 to replace it. It's not cheap. And they and they're getting three or four hundred dollars for them. Or you just straight pipe it. Yeah. Well, that's what. Yeah. Unless you have remote I can't, start, not, then you can't do that. I'm not at liberty to say what the Jeep has, but I don't think they're going to get my catalytic converter unless they go to the, the automobile graveyard. There, I said it. Yeah, I got that. My old lady's car's we're, got automatic start. We're in Virginia. You have no obligation to have a catalytic converter. Oh, well, I thought you did. No. No. That's California, New York. Uh, there are a couple other states, but not Virginia. All of them don't sound very red. I'm... So, yeah, it's like South Carolina, you don't even have an inspection. I've seen a lot of duct tape cars there. You can recycle I that. I've seen some shady cars, that's for sure. So, anyway. You know, I, I just want to point something out for you. I, I don't like to keep track of the clock. We have made it 12 minutes. And we're not talking about beer? I have not even mentioned the beer I've got. Ah, well, what do you got? And I, I, I'm just dying because we talked about Smutty Nose, and, and, and I've got one for you. All of right. course, you had to look up the origin of the name. Turns out it's some sort of island. But I've got the Shebrew hashtag RBG IPA. If uh, you're a little bit older. Pound sign RBG IPA from Schmaltz. And uh, Gee, RBG, is that the woman? Ruth Bader Ginsburg, yeah, yes. And uh if you're watching on the video, there's all kinds of Supreme Court justices on the label. See, I knew something. And uh, it's a milkshake India pale ale brewed with raspberry, blueberry, and grapefruit. And I want to talk about that. But first, I want to talk about Schmaltz. Because Smut knows, Smutty knows, Smut Labs thought that was weird. Schmaltz is rendered chicken or goose fat. Yeah. So what the hell? They also make a line of beers, I think, called Hebrewed. <laughs> no, they do. And they actually were making a Christmas or Hanukkah beer, if you will, that so every is, year is, got was a seven, 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 six, eight, 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 nine, nine, nine. They got to 14 and they couldn't do it anymore. Is the Hebrew, is that kosher? Yeah, probably. Just got to make sure. Um, Yeah. I mean, it's got the descent color from Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah, it does have it. Yeah. And, and pretty cool label. It's a, uh, Brewed in honor of International Women's Collaboration Brew Day, which is also a cool, important day. We kind of touched on that last week. Yeah. There are a lot of really talented female brewers yeah, out and there. A, and, and more and more coming up every day. I mean, there's really amazing. Yeah, I'm not finding if schmaltz. Yep, kosher beer. Okay, Hebrew and Shebrew. I like that. I, I like what they're doing. Still not sure about the schmaltz. Genesis, of course. Genesis, Genesis has a Kaya. That's their, yeah. That's their, it's the chosen beer. <laughs> I'm loving this. <laughs> Actually, it's been here for a while, it says, but anyway, yeah, 17 years. Yeah, I've been to their, uh, their place up in uh, New, jo New York, out of, outside of Albany. So, yeah, they make their, their, um, their holiday beers were amazing. And like I say, they quit. Oh, they said did make a 17th anniversary, 17 malts and 17 hops, 17% alcohol. Huck session, birthday session. Hell, that's that's a Huck Christmas session. All right. So I've never gotten the full breakdown well, on on Huck birthday, Huck Christmas. Okay. Huck. So a Huck session beer. Thursday. Is anything over seven, seven and up. That's a Huck session beer. Everybody's like. I'm going to drink a session beer. And I'm like, okay, well, to me, a session beer is anything 7% or up because I'm going to drink a lot of them. See, I would draw my line at five. Yeah. Well, it's, it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek, a bit of a oxymoron. 
Because, you know, your session beers are four, four and a half. Yes, yeah, so sessions but, are but, low. But for Huck, they have to be higher because I'm bigger than light. I mean, I am Huck. You know, I am the, the beer the beer guy. He is your Huckleberry. I am your Huckleberry or Huckleberry. Anyway, we won't get into that. So um, a Huck birthday session is 12. So if you want to give me a good beer, you get me a session beer or you get me a birthday session on my birthday, which my not Huck, but Huck's underlying personalities birthday is coming up in a couple of weeks. So I don't know what we're going to do for that yet, but um, stay tuned. Usually it's like a two or three week extravaganza. Probably going to end up some point with my daughter's wedding so so what is what is christmas christmas i just made that up 17 percent beer actually I, you know i think that's a that good, was that was where it, what made me question was yeah you said, i just made christmas that up but now i'm session. thinking that we used to do i used to do like a christmas beer tasting and we'd get like 24 beers and all of them would be 12 13 percent up hefty christmas 15 beers, so i thought right. it was a thing right so it is a thing because a christmas session is like we couldn't do it one time we had 22 beers and there was like eight of us right do the math that means two beers each couldn't do it yep couldn't drink all the beer we had to pass out and try again the next day that's a lot of beer 12 days of christmas that's right i've done that too. Huck's 12 days of christmas <laughs> session well we've done uh the, some someone's of the, going to jail some of the other beer beer journalists and i have done 12 days of christmas we've done 25 days of christmas we've done where everybody drinks beer and writes about it but people aren't writing so much. I oh, somebody hacked my website. So if you're looking for huxbeerbus.com, don't go there. I don't know who the Russians are, but I'm not there anymore, apparently. And I'm not sure I'm going to bring it back. I think I'm going to change to what I'm doing. I haven't decided what yet. I might just go with a bigger Instagram presence. I think Instagram. Yeah. YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. I and, might go uh, back on YouTube. They they quit paying me, so I left. But I could go back. There's some other platforms out there. Vimeo. It's a good. Does Vimeo still exist? Yeah. I think you. it might be a pay-per-view or something, but they're, they're, it's really high-quality video. Have you considered World Star Hip Hop? I do not know World Star Hip Hop. Most of the time it's street fights, but like if we throw in a beer video every once in a while, I think people will be pleased. Well, there you go. We could like start a whole new genre on the hip hop genre. You, you know what? You and I can drink a beer, and then we fight. I'm good. Head I'd probably take streets. you because I'm going to cheat. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. That's right. It's like people are like, oh, old man, I'm going to kick your butt. No, you know, you're probably not. But <laughs> you might get a lick in, but that's going to be dumb to cheat. All right. We we have to rate these. We do? Know. We have yeah. to? We got uh, it? We're obligated. All right. I, I don't obligation. know by who. I know. We should change that. We're not rating beers anymore. We're going to move completely away from that. I told you our news. We're not even going to talk about Our new beer. slogan is... The beers help us remember the stories. That's our new slogan. We don't really care about the beer. It's just here. It's just a prop. Okay, I'll write the beer. So here you go. This beer is like something I'm going to say. I'm going to say something dirty. It's made with lactose. Right? You're familiar with lactose. I don't like lactose, but let me tell you something. I like this beer. I'm not getting the whole end of line lactose bite. Now, maybe... Just a little bit, but it's like almost confused with hops at this point. This is a good beer. The milkshake beer, it really does take milkshake. You know how a milkshake, when you get to the bottom and it's yeah. kind of fluffy, kind of airy. This is how this beer tastes. So this is a good beer. And I'm a big fan of Smutty Nose. I'm going to give this beer a 475. This is a good beer. He is and the can hus- is, is like really retro 70s. Yeah, if you're, if you're watching the video, it's definitely a standout can. I would pick that up. Yeah, the retro show. 70s. If you're on Untapped, he is Huck's Beer Buzz. I am Big Nate. You can also find me at Horror Show. That's my old handle. Long story short, we're going to rate this schmaltz. Shebrew, hashtag pound signed RBG IPA. And uh, Huck really knows me at this point. Uh, it's a milkshake IPA brewed with raspberry, blueberry, and grapefruit. As he knows, I really love fruit. So I'm going to be hard-pressed to rate this very low um it's quality product the can is stand out once again i'm not going to go as high as a 4.75 though i will go with a four even there you go so four out of five not bad we're going to try some more uh, brews next here on brews day tuesday brought to you by the cellar restaurant and six-pack store on 105.3 the bear